to Sbongi Depesani, who's the ANC's head of presidency. Dr. Pesan, good evening to you and thank you so much for your time. Will the president abide by the SCOPA request for his written submissions? Uh, good evening, Bongi, and thanks for having me. Um, <clears throat> the president has demonstrated on several occasions that he will cooperate with any structure or institution that require of him to to be accountable. So based on that experience, it wouldn't be difficult if such a request is made to the president that he will consider it positively. So he'll even consider positively a possibility of giving oral evidence in this case? It will depend on the nature of the request, uh, because uh, as far as I know, uh, the president has not received such a request. And uh, But all that one can, can assert quite firmly is that the president has never reneged on any institution that require of him to account for what is believed his conduct or any other thing. Mm -hmm. He's one president who respects the rules of the game, the rule of law, in particular accountability. Now, Dr. Pesani, I remember you and I were in conversation in December over this very issue. And one of the things that you spoke about is that um, this was a distortion and it was an ANC-NEC meeting, and it was taken out of context because he was explaining about matters that had arisen about other campaigns, not necessarily, um, you know, the, the CR-17 campaign, while it was also on the table as part of the discussion. Yesterday, when I was listening to the MPs in Parliament, and these are MPs from your very organization, it sounds like some of them still want the veracity of that particular audio to be established. I don't think that's in question. The president does admit it's authentic, right? Uh, fact number one, uh, Bongiwe, is that it is an audio that relates to an NEC meeting. And I think that NEC meeting was around early 2021. And the context, that's part of the context, the first instance of the context. Part of the issue was that at that meeting, the matter that was being ventilated related to the CR-17 funds in the NEC meeting. Now, in the context of that debate, other complaints or other matters relating to other campaigns, uh, use of statement and so on, were brought to the fore. So the president was explaining that um, he believed that he would rather focus on the CR-17 than try to divert uh, that matter with uh, with other matters that were being brought to the table. Mm. So I guess then, of course, those MPs that were trying to find out its veracity have now been answered. Let's move on to this then. Yesterday, um, something that uh, former Scopa Chair Temba Kodi had actually spoken to us about here on the show and predicting, saying that Mervyn Dirks might find himself being reshuffled uh, from Scopa, happened. And there's also the suspension uh, of him that obviously he's currently facing right now, which is precautionary. Some analysts argue that this shows that the ANC caucus is not coherent and this doesn't look for, uh, good for the political party. And they also further argue that his suspension is more about towing the party line instead of ensuring that there is accountability in this particular matter. I wonder what does that then say in light of that argument about the role of parliament as an oversight body because it is meant to be accountable. But now the suspension of Mervyn Dirks looks like it might be the ANC putting itself ahead of the constitution here. <laughs> Not really. Um, I think what we need to appreciate is that uh, if one individual within a party such as the ANC acts in a, in a way that is at variance with uh, what the caucus of that party requires of them, that does not mean the caucus is incoherent. You can't make such a general statement based on one incident or uh, quite a few incidents. It has to be quite consistent. But what is important is that at every moment where members of the ANC are found to be acting at, uh, in sort of against what caucus or uh, what their party requires of them, action has got to be taken of them. It's not about the uh, the caucus uh, being incoherent or the ANC being incoherent. Remember, we have, even during the January 8th statement, 
the issue of discipline in the ranks of the ANC has been quite uh, dominant. And in the context of uh, behavior or conduct of members of the ANC, the ANC is beginning to act. And when we believe that somebody has a case to answer, he must do so. So, Dr. Pesani, pardon me. Um, I'm listening to what you're saying. It's yeah. difficult to, 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 to really um, not make this inference then that you are saying because he went against the caucus, then he must be suspended. It is not about the allegations that he makes that, are ne that need to be put to the test. Which comes first here? Is it the Constitution, because Parliament is an oversight body, or is it the ANC caucus? No, it's not about which one comes first. In Parliament, you have different political parties, and every political party has got its own disciplinary prescripts and expects members to behave in a, or to conduct themselves in a particular way. And if I remember very well, uh, the issue of Mervyn, De uh, I mean, this uh, member of parliament has been on record almost undermining the president, not only with relation to this uh, Scopa issue, also with relation to wishing the president death and so on. His conduct has been quite, uh, uh, un I'll say, very unsavory, for lack of better word. So... When we look at conduct of members, every caucus, every party has got the rules and expects its members to behave in a particular way. All right. It is unfortunate, yes. And that this issue of uh, meting out discipline or suspending people, there are processes in that regard. He will have to prove himself innocent, to prove his innocence and so on. And, and I, I think suppose also... then the president will have to prove himself innocent as well, maybe, or, or however way the, 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 the committee goes. But uh, we've no, been the here, that we've been... Indicated. The president will not, yes. will not disrespect any institution that requires. He has no history okay. of disrespecting courts of law, any institution that requires of him. To, to, to account. He has no I such hear you. history. I hear you, Dr. Yeah. Pesani, but we've been here before in Parliament. I, I, I think you'd agree. At the height of the Nkandla debacle, ANC MPs put up a spirited fight that then, then President uh, Zuma must not speak, must not account, and we knew what was happening with the Nkandla debacle. Now, there was the arms deal saga as well that was within Scopa. We know what happened to MPs like Andrew Feinstein. The Deputy Chief Justice lambasted MPs for failure to act on information that was in the public domain. And you remember, he lambasted them in the State Capture Commission of Inquiry. Now, this current administration promised that things would be different, but we can't help but look at the developments then and still use that particular context where we saw Ngandla, where we saw um, the arms deal, and subsequently those members within Scopa being reshuffled. I wonder what do you say then to those that are saying that we are seeing more of the same instead of making strides towards accountability? No, I'm happy that you are saying the current administration, but I think you, you need to also acknowledge that for some time, we have been on record as the ANC to acknowledge our limitations to a point that a diagnostic report uh, was made at the, at the national conference. And in the context of ensuring that we ensure that our members do not just control with, uh, the line, we've set their platforms from which members of the party should engage the party. There is no evidence. There is no evidence as far as I can remember that uh, this particular MP went to caucus and the caucus agreed with him. And I think what not saying members of parliament should just control and agree with what is wrong. We're not saying that. Members of parliament have got to ensure that they do their work of oversight. But what is important that their conduct has got to be such a way that it upholds the values and principles of the ANC. And part of that is to ensure that you don't just insult the president or the leadership of the organization. Mervyn Debs has been quoted on social media saying all kinds of unsavory issues against the president. And this coincides with his um, conduct or his um, uh, his statements on uh, saying the president must, must, must account and so on. Okay, we Dr. don't Pesan, have a problem. There is, 
Sorry? Pardon me, pardon me. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to ask for clarity there on a point you've just made. You say that he made unsavory remarks about the president on social media. You also are bringing up some of the things of him not going into caucus, etc. So is the suspension based on the fact that he made these subsequent remarks um, to, uh, against the president? Because from what I understand, it's about this particular matter. But if now we are bringing in what, what his opinion has been on the president, is that the real reason? that he's been suspended? No, I have not seen his, dis but what his disciplinary letter or his letter of suspension. But I, I am going to, 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 to challenge you and mm. everyone to, to follow up on the conduct of uh, this particular MP. I have, I have. I so, think, I'm sorry, pardon me, Dr. I, I have, I know of him and I've seen him in parliament yeah. and we've seen what yeah. he's been doing. But I think the party should have acted then. I think maybe for yeah. now, Shouldn't no, no. does the ANC no, no. not then admit that it did not act against him if it did not like his conduct in time and no. is simply no. maybe convoluting matters here now? When a member acts in a particular way, he gets consulted, he gets spoken to, and if he insists on that or he persists with that kind of behavior, then action gets taken. Hmm. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, to the best of my knowledge, this particular MP has been spoken to, especially when president. Uh, uh, he, during COVID and so on, his statements were unsavory and he was spoken to uh, as far as I know. And so then, but he persists. So in the context of his general conduct, now recently and for some time, then it, it was felt upon that some action, the caucus in particular felt that it needed to really uh, take some action and engage him through a disciplinary process. And whether he will be found guilty or not is a matter that he will actually prove himself in that particular platform. All right, Dr. Pesan, we, we, we out of time. Uh, just a yes or no quick question. The president says that he's willing to fall on his sword um, in that particular order, you know, the one that I'm, re I'm, I'm referring to. Should it then be found that within SCOPA, there was wrongdoing here, even after the context has been established. Will he be willing to fall on his sword? The president, the issue of the president is the minutes of the ANC. All right. Thank you so much, Tatu Pesan. It's always a pleasure to speak to you. Uh, that is the ANC's um, head of uh, presidency, Spongile Pesani, just talking to us about uh, the scope of hearing. You would have seen it here on the show yesterday, um, where the uh, committee, Francis, you, you heard that they're going to be writing to the president mm. and uh, they will now be expecting those written submissions. And uh, it, it looks like there's going to be interesting developments here. And, and we all want to see what it says. Uh, within seven to ten days, they've given the president um, a timeline on that submission. We'll follow it closely for you.